Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Is that good? My name is Barbara Sucher, and I'm the Associate Dean of Continuing Medical Education here at the Quillen College of Medicine. On behalf of East Tennessee State University and the College of Medicine, I want to thank everyone who has joined us today for an exciting announcement about the establishment of telemedicine services and teleconferencing education for towns in Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky. We're especially appreciative of our friends from the United States Department of Agriculture and the community partners who have come in today, as well as representatives from the offices of Senator Alexander, Senator Corker, and Congressman Phil Rowe. I plan to speak only briefly before I invite Mr. Bobby Good, the State Director for the USDA Rural Development, to explain why we're here today and the USDA's involvement. Later, I'll invite Dr. Brian Nolan, the new president of our university, Dr. Wilsey Bishop, our chief operating officer and vice president for health affairs, and Dr. Philip Bagnall, the dean of the College of Medicine, to share their thoughts. If I may, I'd like to direct your attention to the sculpture behind me. Many of you have seen it. Some pass by it each day. It captures an image that I think has some bearing on this morning's announcement. Those hands you see illustrate a sacred trust. A sacred trust between faculty and the medical student, and ultimately between physician and patients. Likewise, there is a sacred trust between ETSU and the community. The people in this region trust us to serve their educational needs. And through the Quillen College of Medicine and the Academic Health Science Center at ETSU, they trust us to improve their health care. We regard it as our duty to earn that trust each and every day. This telemedicine project will deliver needed specialty and subspecialty services by Quillen physicians to rural towns in our region. A video conferencing hub here at ETSU connected to mobile video conferencing equipment in the medical centers and the clinics with treating in, in the towns that we serve will enable our doctors to consult with treating physicians and providers remotely, and to offer treatment recommendations and management strategies. In addition, we'll be working with our partners to identify the appropriate educational support for the clinicians and healthcare providers in those communities through our continuing medical education programs. While our partner communities may be small in size, the health care needs of this, their citizens are not. We commend the USDA for recognizing the unmet needs of our rural communities and stepping forward with grant funding to address it. Please join me in welcoming Bobby Good, the State Director for the USDA Rural Development. Mr. Good. Get a few medical students in here and the, the volume goes way up. Test, test, better, test. Okay. Well, my volume's usually way up anyway. <laughs> so. uh, well, we're just here today to celebrate with you and uh, celebrate with uh, three state area, the opportunities that we have to provide this, uh, we call it distance learning telemedicine. It's our DLT program. Uh, distance learning has been used uh, throughout the first district here uh, for many years throughout the high schools, either to join the high schools together or to join higher education with those high schools for dual credit so that those students have opportunity to learn. But today we're here to celebrate the telemedicine aspect of that program because it allows opportunities for the university, but it also allows opportunity for the rural people in the three state area. 
And so I'm just here to celebrate with you. I'm proud to be here and be a part of this grant presentation. But with us today, we have uh, the area director, Mr. Joe Woody, who's area director in Knoxville and Greenville for our office, and Mr. Lewis Trivett from the Greenville area office. And they're the ones that have actually done the work on this project. I just get to come help you celebrate. So, But uh, our partners, uh, our federal partners are here. And we have Lana Moore from Senator Alexander's office, Bridget Baird from Senator Corker's office, and one of our uh, uh, truly fun partners is Congressman Rowe because he and I really uh, enjoy each other's company and I hate that he's not able to be with us today, but we have his representative, John Abe, Abe Teague, with us. And John Abe's going to come up and just say a few remarks. Dean Seacher, I told you I wouldn't embarrass you. I'll try not to. <laughs> but I do want to thank you and, and Dr. Bagnell for all the support that you've given this institution and what you do bring to Northeast Tennessee through the Quillen College of Medicine. And, and I wanted to welcome Dr. Brian Nolan to our area. We're glad to have you here in East Tennessee. And we'll say thank you for what you do. And I want to say thanks to, not to the USDA Department of Rural Development because we are building a real good relationship. And, with them, and I know that they do everything they possibly can to reach out and help our community. Uh, three years ago, I guess it's about that time, I had an opportunity to go down to Cock County with the Nyswanger Foundation and, and actually see this distance learning program in action when they uh, had students that lived in that very rural uh, county talking to a, a diver that was off the Great Barrier Reef and it was just in, in, in real time. So, uh, you know, this is another piece of that where you can do medicine in real time and and I know one of the things that the congressman has been so uh, interested in is the communication between the veteran affairs and the Department of Defense so uh, he's been to Afghanistan twice to try to understand uh, from the point of injury to getting them in the into the VA system back here at home in 72 hours and I hope that maybe this opportunity will help that line of communication and maybe help begin to uh, penetrate that wall where they are having a problem in communicating with each other through the VA and the Department of Defense. But Bobby, thank you very much. And Joe, thank you for what you do and all others. Thank you very much. Thank you, John A. Uh, we have one of the county mayors, Mr. Uh, Larry Potter here with us from Johnson County, and his county will actually reap the benefits of some of this. But uh, uh, the president is known for saying we have to out-educate, out-innovate, and out-build the rest of the world. And this covers two of those, because it's out-educating and it's out-innovating the rest of the world. And so with that, congratulations, and thank you for participating in our program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Good. I just want to recognize, too, one of our tele, um, telemedicine partners, Lindy White, who's the CEO of Smith County Hospital. We're glad to have you here. Are there any other partners? No, I think that was it. But I appreciate you coming. Right there. OK. All right, my favorite thing. Um, it's my pleasure now to welcome the new president of ETSU, whom I've just gotten to meet, Dr. Brian Nolan. Dr. Nolan? Dr. Sutcher, thank you and good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you today as we celebrate what is another foundational element in our longstanding commitment to the rural health needs of the region. I want to thank our partners at the federal level, at the local level. Uh, I also want to thank the Dean and Dr. Bishop. But I think it's fitting that I stand in front of this statue that says mentor, uh, because I also want to take a moment to thank Dr. Paul Stanton, who's a true mentor and friend. Uh, whose commitment and dedication to rural health is evidenced in everything that we do here at East Tennessee State University. When our med school was created more than 38 years ago, we made a pledge to the region that we would improve health care delivery across our rural communities. Since that time, through the Kellogg program and others, we have revolutionized health care in Johnson County, Hawkins County, and in counties across the region. Through the tireless efforts and dedication of our faculty and staff, we have transformed the lives of many, not only in East Tennessee, but in Kentucky and in Virginia. And that's what this grant does today. It provides opportunities to revolutionize care, to realize efficiencies, and to provide better service to the individuals who comprise our area. 
This isn't just something that benefits the great state of Tennessee. It touches Harlan County, Kentucky, and our partners to the north in Virginia. But through telemedicine, through technology, we can take the skills, resources, and ability of our faculty and staff and bring them to bear on those who need our help the most. Once again, I want to congratulate Dr. Sucher, Dr. Bagnell, Dr. Bishop, and others who've worked to make this exciting project a reality. I want to thank our partners at the USDA for their faith in the Quillen College of Medicine, and I certainly look forward to watching this grow in the months and years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nolan. Dr. Wilsey Bishop is ETSU's Chief Operating Officer, and in her role as Vice President for Health Affairs, will explain how telemedicine fits into the service mission of the Academic Health Science Center. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, I, too, am delighted to be here. It's always nice to be at an occasion when somebody brings you a check, isn't it? <laughs> Um, this is an exciting time for us because it is an opportunity for us to uh, take another serious step toward reaching out to our partner communities. Uh, ETSU is all about partnerships and as we walked in this building today I pointed out to Dr. Nolan that this building is an example of that partnership. Uh, it was built with part federal dollars and part state dollars and so it is a real visible example of what we do as an academic health sciences center is that we work with our communities to deliver health and education and s important services. Uh, this is also a partnership project too because not only are our faculty uh, from the College of Medicine involved, but our faculty and nurse practitioners and our nurse managed clinics are also involved in this outreach. And so again, an example of what we do as an academic health sciences center. In fact, I think there are few centers in the country that are as involved in interprofessional education as, and in rural outreach as we have here at East Tennessee State. And there are few academic health centers in the country that have the kind of programming mix that we do that allows us to bring together not only the allied health uh, resources, uh, but also the public health, uh, nursing and medicine, and pharmacy. So we're growing, we're serving our area, and with partners like the USDA uh, and our other federal partners, uh, we really do appreciate uh, the work that's been done. Thank you for what you've done to advance this, and thank you all for being here today. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Um, next, we'd like to hear from Dr. Bagno. He's the Dean of Medicine and a physician who leads us in this mission to better serve the community each and every day. Thank you, Barbara, and thank you everyone for being here this morning. Um, I'm gonna start with the statue behind me. Uh, this, for those who are um, who visit us or who haven't visited us before. This was uh, um, a, done by one of our local artists, um, Danny Green, uh, who unfortunately is leaving our, or moving a little bit away from our area, and he's leaving our area because of the College of Medicine. Uh, his wife uh, became a, a student in our rural program uh, roughly eight years ago, six, seven years ago, and uh, finished her, uh, graduated from our medical school, uh, started her uh, surgery residency program, uh, and uh, the two of them are leaving this summer to uh, establish a surgical practice and move his artistry uh, a little closer to Knoxville, but not that far away. And uh, it's, it's actually a reminder to me of uh, the strength of this school. We're a small school. Uh, we have a very strong culture. We serve a rural region. We understand our mission. And this grant uh, will play a significant role over time in our, our mission. Um, it's difficult, I, I, I was saying earlier, we, we've had an interest in getting telemedicine started. It's difficult uh, for any of us to find resources to justify new expenses. And um, <clears throat> this gives us a start, a very good start, uh, in very capable hands. Uh, uh, and so thank you very much. It is much appreciated. And we will, uh, I, I think you will be pleased 
uh, to learn in uh, three or four years' time uh, how this has been converted uh, into uh, a, a, a grant that, that really does serve the educational and healthcare needs of this region. So thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. <clears throat> Um, thank you, Dr. Bagnell. After we wrap up in a moment, I invite everyone to stay for some light refreshments in the back. I guess in summary, what we want to say is, as we begin this project with our partners, um, I want to restate the vision that we have, which is working with them to improve health, the health care of their communities by delivering new medical services to patients in a new way, as well as the education the educational component is just as important to support that continued success in these endeavors. We are grateful to the USDA for helping us bring this concept to fruition. So if you'd like to present the check, Dr. Nolan, Dr. Bishop, and Dr. Bagno would be pleased to receive it. Thank you. And I would like our federal partners to come up here also, please, and our staff. You want to do it in front of the podium? That's cool. You don't want in? I'll be on the other one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.